So, my first Pentax SMC Takumar. Oh boy. Let's just get right into this. This is the Pentax Super Multicoded Takumar 35mm f3.5. So, let's just elephant in the studio apartment or whatever. This is a really slow lens. It's f3.5, which means this lens is not going to be letting in a whole ton of light. About as much as a kit lens, actually, and won't really provide the most shallow depth of field ever. But I can explain to all the bokeh horrors out there. See, I got this demonetized saying horror for you guys, so just, just give me a chance. I really love old lenses, and I really love full frame images. But I also really don't like lugging around a giant full frame camera and a giant metal lens. Plus, let's be honest, a lot of old lenses are pretty soft, especially in the corners. So, this lens, for me at least, is the ultimate compromise. It's slow, but on full frame, honestly, it's not a big deal for me. It's small, it's sharp, even wide open, and corners are, well, you don't really look at them directly anyways. And it's a full frame lens, so let's take a closer look into this heavily overlooked lens. At least I think it's overlooked. This is my first Pentax lens, so... I have, I have no idea what's like well known and what isn't. Alright, the Pentax 35mm f3.5. This lens is about 150 grams, it's absolutely tiny, and has a 1.5 foot or 45 centimeter minimum focusing distance. It, it's also just a fun little thing. Look at how tiny this rear element is! I, I love it! <laughs> this lens really genuinely isn't compromising for anything with size or f-stop, it knows what it's about. It's 35mm, so it's not ultra-wide or anything, but it's somewhat wide, at least on full frame. On APS-C, it's closer to 52mm, and on Micro Four Thirds, it's actually 70mm, which are all decent focal lengths. Wide open, the center has great sharpness, and the corners have decent sharpness, too. Vignetting is really good unless you throw your camera on the ground with IBIS on. Stopping down helps a bit with the sharpness, but this lens is already pretty sharp as it is, so... Eh. It also handles flaring shockingly well, and by shockingly well, I mean, like, shockingly well. It also has bokeh, kinda? Unless you're really close to something, you won't really get a ton of bokeh, but it's enough for me personally, and, and with the lens being so slow, focusing is a lot easier, so hey, there's that. The bokeh that you do have, though, is, uh, well, the five aperture blades aren't really helping you much. I mean, it's okay, and it's not, like, offensive in any way, and it has a tiny bit of character, but it's not really great, especially any highlights. To be honest though, considering how slow the lens is and how it really wasn't intended to blur out the background, it's actually pretty good in that regard. You usually won't even get that much bokeh on a lens that's slow anyways, so I really wouldn't worry about it. But speaking of slow, oh yeah, f3.5. But it's not that big of a deal, at least for me. Most modern cameras can comfortably shoot at about ISO 1600 or higher, so shooting later in the day or in darkish areas isn't really a giant issue, at least for me. If you're in a really dark area though, then that's an issue. No one loves me, I'm so ugly. Please like this post if you disagree. Like this. Plus, this lens isn't really intended to give you a lot of background blur, it's a slow lens, it's not really made for that. If you want a fast lens that'll blow out your background, you get a 50 or an 85 or a 100 or a 105 or 135 or a 200 or a 600 if you're really into that. But if you were shooting on something like, let's say, a Panasonic G7, how slow the lens is might actually be an issue for you. While I didn't have a ton of time to use this lens much with stills on my G7, I did take a few test shots here and there just to see how it was, and it was okay. It's a 70mm equivalent, which is pretty tight, but you'll be cropping out the corners of the frame so the entire image will be sharp at least. But while I didn't get to use this lens a lot on my G7 for stills, I actually use it a lot for video. Specifically overhead shots that would be too tight on a 50mm lens on Micro Four Third. In that regard, this lens is absolutely fantastic. It's sharp, it has nice colors, and it's super easy to focus for video. And it's just a champ of a video lens, especially on my G7. But I think this lens really is at home on a full frame camera or an APS-C camera. Just because that crop is really tight. Or just like get a focal reducer or something like that. I don't know. But there is one really big issue with this lens, at least for me, probably not for you. If you look at my other lenses, you focus closer by turning the focus ring left, and you close down the lens by turning the aperture ring right. But on the Pentax, the focus and aperture ring are reversed. You focus closer by turning it right, and you stop down by turning the aperture ring left. If you used a Pentax lens that are just starting out with manual focus, this isn't a big deal, but I've been using other manual focus lenses for so long, 
This really does throw me off, and it actually made me miss focus several times when I first got the lens. And if I change out lenses, it actually throws me off, and then I end up missing a few shots just because of that. That aside though, this lens is absolutely fantastic. So, is this a good 35mm lens even though it's slow? I mean, yeah, of course it is. The lens can be gotten for like $50, and I think I got mine for like $35. The colors are nice, the sharpness is nice, the corners are good, the bokeh exists. And this isn't really the most all-purpose lens out there, but for something like street or landscape, this lens is absolutely perfect for what, I mean, I personally want. If you want a lens that's a bit faster, I'd highly suggest checking out the Minolta 35mm 2.8. I really liked that lens while I had it. Or a Canon New FD. I personally haven't owned a New FD 35mm lens, but the New FD lenses I have tried have been absolutely fantastic, so I highly suggest those if you're looking for another option. So, tell me guys. What are your favorite, like, older, kind of obscure, or really slow lenses? I've been really into slow vintage lenses recently, because they're really small, and they're super sharp, and they're great. I love them. And they're also, like, $5. So if you have any good suggestions, please tell me in the comments section. And if it's, like, a good one, I might make a video on it. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.